hello guys welcome back to my channel today we're going to be looking at question 5 and the june 2021 cxc mathematics pass paper let's get right into it it says 100 students were surveyed on the amount of money they spent on data for their cell phones during a week the table below shows the results as a midpoint for each and the midpoint for each class interval so here we have the amount spent we have it 50 to 60 or we read this from the middle x is greater than 50 but less than or equal to 60. this is in money this is the number of students we also call as a frequency and here is the midpoint which is the midpoint of the amount of money spent here it says using a table determine the modal class of the amount of money spent modal class refers to the class that has the highest frequency so you first come to the frequency column you look for the highest frequency it turns out to be 31 and then you go across to the class which is 70 to 80. so the modal class here would have been that x is greater than 70 but less than or equal to 80. all right and we can just simply put this here bear in mind that this is money so we put on the dollars and that's how you get an easy one mark there now part two calculate an estimate for the mean amount of money spent giving your answer correct to two decimal places and you don't understand why two decimal places because money itself has two decimal places now the formula for mean as you know it is x bar equal the sum of fx over the sum of f f is a frequency and in this case x represents the data midpoint value all right so let's go back up so we need to find the midpoint with a corresponding frequency so it would be 55 times 7 plus 65 times 11 plus 75 times 31 plus 85 times 29 plus 95 times 22 so you have the midpoint multiplied by the frequency which is also the number of students all right so let's go there and plug it because i can actually i could create an x column or I could just go ahead and work it out because it's not that much values. So we see 7 times 55. Let's me, let me go down and identify that there. So this is going to become 7 times 55 plus. All right, let's go back up and look at it again. 7 times 55 plus 11 times 65. So plus 11 multiply by 65 let me fix this up right here so that should be 11 right 11 times 65 plus of course as i was saying to you i could create an x column i don't have to do this but i'm just showing you how we could do it 31 times 75 31 times 75 plus let me see now 29 times 85 29 times 85 and then finally if I go back up a bit right here it's gonna be 22 times 95 so plus 22 times 95 and all of this goes over the total frequency all right now sometimes in the question you're told what the total frequency is so you don't even have to work it out let's go back up and see if they told us that 100 students so there you go you don't even have to add up the frequency for yourself it is 100 all right so everything will be over 100 now here's where i'm going to make my calculator do all of the work for me i go for my fraction bar i have 7 times 55 plus 11 times 65 plus 31 times 75 31 times 75 plus 29 times 85 plus 22 times 95 and, and guess I can put in this one time or I could work out the numerator first it depends on what you want right that's 79.8 so I'm gonna have 79.8 but remember now this is money all right two decimal places which means i'm gonna have to add a zero at the end and i need to put on dollar sign because we're dealing with money here money has two decimal places right now they didn't have to tell you because you should naturally know that money comes with two decimal places all right now one of the things you probably want to do 
is probably just look up to your calculator to make sure you put in the right thing. Eh? So you have 7 times 55, 11 times 65, plus 31 times 75, plus 29 times 85, plus 22 times 95. That would, could be the only reason why you could get a question wrong if you put the wrong thing in the calculator. Once you realize that you have put in the right thing, you're done and you're on to the next question. It says Damien reports that the median amount spent is $84. Briefly explain why Damien report could be correct. Alright, let's go to the previous class. Let's go back to the table. We're looking for the median. The median is the data value in the middle. Now, what do I mean by that? Now, we can't directly determine the median from this because, of course, you know, we have classes here. And, of course, this is group data. So, there's no way to exactly know the median. But, we can find the median class. The median class is a class in the middle. Now, there are 100 data values here. And since this is group data, the position of the median, we call that Q2, the second quartile, would be N, or the sum of F, which is the total frequency over 2. This would be 100 over 2, which is 50. So I need to find the 50th class. We start adding from top. So we have 7 plus 11. That is going to give me 18. Now, 18 plus 31 gives me uh, 18 plus 31 would give me uh, 49 and then so we go down some more so the median class itself would be somewhere in here between 80 and 90 all right so once we have found the median class and of course we find the median class by adding the frequency until we get to the 50th position we go again we say 7 plus 11 that's going to give me 18 18 plus 31 is going to give me 49 we're not there at, as yet now, when we add 49 now plus 29, that's going to be way over 50. Remember, you need to get to 50. So 50 falls within this class, which is 80 to 90. So how do I justify that? All right. Simply put, we say since the median class is between 80 and 90, all right, of course, it should be greater than x is greater than 80, but less than 90. Since this is where the median class falls, then the median would fall in this region. And 84 falls in the region. So that is how we know that he could be correct. Once he estimates a value that falls within the median class, then any possible value in there could be the median. So that is how we know that. Question B. It says the two-way contingency table below gives information on the mode of transportation to school of 100 students. Right? Complete the table below by inserting the missing values. Now, one thing about the contingency table, it always has a total for the row. So if you go right across here, and you add up everything from walk, cycle, and drive, you get a total. If you go vertical, it's the same thing. So if I'm going vertical for walk and I want to know the number of girls who walk, I simply just need to say 23 take away 15, which is going to give me 8. All right. Now let's go all the way up across to the total. We know that girls, 8 girls walk, 18 girls cycle, and 26 girls drive. So if I want a total, I just simply need to add all of those. So let me go on my calculator. I'm going to have 8 plus 18 plus 26 equal. So I'm going to have 52 over here. Now what is missing? Alright, this is missing right here. Now what do I know? I know that 15 plus what, whoever cycles for boys plus whoever drive is equal to 48. So I just need to take 48 in my calculator as my total. My total is 48. And I need to subtract the sum of the other two, which is 15 and 14. All right? 19. So this is 19 right there. We're almost done. We have an X total. And that total down here that is missing is for the column, which is 18 and 19. So that's it. If you want to make your calculator work, 18 plus 19 equal to 37. So the concept is that you have a row total and you have a column total. And, and that gives you what you want. All right, you'll have completed your table. If you want, you can add up going across just to make, your, make sure your answers are correct. So I would add 15 
19, and 14 just to check my answers. All right, let's do that. So you pull up your calculator and you can say 15 plus 19 plus 14 equal. It's not 48, you know, something is wrong. So we're done with that. A student is selected at random, what's the probability that he or she was being was being driven to school on that day. So I guess it represents the persons that are being driven. So P for probability, probability of driven would be the total amount of persons who drive. So mm, the total amount of persons who drive here would be boys who drive and girls who drive. So that would be 14 plus 26. All right, because you can be a boy who is driven and a girl or a girl who is driven. But I, didn't, I don't even need to add up because I'm wasting time. I already have the row total, the column total, sorry. See? If you add 14 and 26, you get 40. So you know that already. So it's just going to be 40 over the total. Now, the overall total that we have is right here in the table. That's 100. Over 100. And then it's just a matter of breaking down, right? 2 into 4 goes 2. 2 into 10 goes 5. So you break down your probability, you end up with 2 fifth. So the probability of being driven. We have girls who are driven, boys who are driven. The total is 40, 40 and overall we have 100 persons. So the 40 goes over the 100 and then you break it down. It says one of the girls is selected at random. What does that mean? It means that you're focusing on girls only. So you're going to ignore the boys that you have totally. What's the probability that she is not, she did not cycle to school? So your probability didn't cycle. Cycle CYCLE given girl because they tell you it's a girl, a girl was chosen, so it means that the boys don't factor in. Now, if it didn't cycle, if it didn't cycle, you either walk or you drive. And since we're focusing on the girls alone, it's 52 girls, so we know it's whatever we have over 52. Now, if it didn't cycle, it's walk, walk is eight or you drive, so it's gonna be eight plus 26 over 52. Why 52? Because this is focusing on girls alone. So 8 plus 26 over 52. How we know that? It says one of the girls is selected at random. So we're sure it's a girl. So the sample space becomes the girls now. Boys are no longer included. And they didn't cycle, which means either they're a walk or they're driven. All right? Now if I add 8 and 26, I'm going to get 34 over 52. Now you have the option of breaking it down yourself. Or you can use a calculator. No, we know that both are even numbers. Two can go into them. Two into 34 would be 17. And two into 52 would be 26. So your probability becomes 17 over 26. All right? And you get a two marks there. So the only important thing here when it comes down to things like these, you just need to read the questions carefully and see what they're focusing on. And one of the critical aspects here was that they spoke about a girl in this question. A girl is selected. We know for sure it's a girl. So we're ruling out the boys totally. All right? We know it's a girl. So the sample space just becomes the total amount of girls that you have. And of course, didn't cycle, which means it has to be one of the other two options. All right? And that is how we get our answer. And that is the end of quest this question. Please remember that we do all the questions on the channel. So you can go back for the other previous questions leading up to this point.